Today I'm showing how to replace a Citroen C1 exhaust system. I've bought a complete new system for our C1, which is the same as the Peugeot 107 and the Toyota Igo, and it consists of two major parts. There's a front and centre section pipe that runs from the connection at the catalyst at the engine to just forward of the rear axle, and a rear box that sits widthways across the car between the rear wheels and has the loop over the axle which joins the centre section here and has the tailpipe here. If like me you fit in a complete exhaust system you'll also need the gasket for the front connection at the catalyst, a clamp for the join and three new rubber hangers. They should come with the system. You'll also need some exhaust assembly paste and because our exhaust has been on for over 10 years it's the original exhaust that came out of the factory with the car I already know that the front O2 sensor, which is fitted into the front exhaust pipe, will be nigh on impossible to get out without busting something, so I'm not going to bother. For 16 quid, I've just bought a universal one. Just be aware that with universal ones, they often don't come with the connector, so you, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, don't worry. I'll show you what to do. Raise the car in the air and support it on axle stands. You could probably get away with just raising the front of the car if you've only got one pair of axle stands, or use your axle stands at the rear and put the front wheels on ramps. If you haven't got axle stands or ramps, but you're still keen to do this yourself, try this. Put two wheels on a, on a curb, a high curb if you can find one, and that should give you enough room to get underneath to do this job. I spent years working on my rally car doing this. Before you do anything else, put some penetrating oil, not WD-40, use some decent quality penetrating oil and get it sprayed onto the nuts that hold the uh, front of the exhaust to the catalytic converter and allow it to soak in for a few minutes. Then with a 14mm socket on an extension bar and possibly you'll need a uh, breaker bar as well, make sure that you can crack the screws that hold the exhaust to the cat loose. Disconnect the O2 sensor connector by pressing on this little button here and pulling the connector apart. If you're determined to try and reuse the original O2 sensor, then now's the time to have a go at getting that out first before everything else is disconnected. Using a 22mm spanner, you'll probably have to give it a fair bit of persuasion. Believe it or not, ours actually came off really easily with just two blows on the end of the spanner from a two pound hammer. And now undo the bolt that hold the front of the exhaust to the cat and remove the bolts, complete with the springs. The front of the exhaust should drop down straight away. If the centre hanger has broken away from the pipe like it has with ours here, then the pipe will just drop straight down to the floor. Otherwise, you'll have to disconnect the central hanger. With the aid of a large screwdriver, recover the gasket. It'll probably stay on the cap. Once you've got it a bit loose, you, you can probably get the rest of the way with a pair of grips. Don't be tempted to do it by hand because it's made of wire and you'll get bits of wire stuck in your fingers. Give the two front bolts a clean up with a wire brush. I wish I'd thought about it beforehand because if I had I would have bought two new bolts but these are serviceable. Then just forward of the rear axle cut the pipe either with an exhaust pipe cutter or a hacksaw. You'll get through this pipe easy enough with a hacksaw. Finally, from under the rear, apply a little WD to the rubbers and disconnect them from the hangers. A pair of grips is quite helpful here as well. And lift the back box from under the car. From the rear, fit the new hangers to the body brackets, bring the new box into position forward pipe over the axle first and fit the brackets into the rubber hangers. A little drop of WD-40 helps it all to slide together easily. Bring the centre section in, raise it up into place and allow it to hang on the centre support. Make ready with your clamp, take the bolt out and spread the clamp so that you can get it over this joint and then keep it on the pipe. Top tip so you don't lose the bolt fit it into the nut on the other side like that and apply some exhaust assembly paste around the flange and bring the centre pipe up to meet the rear box pipe bring the clamp 
round the two parts. Rather maddeningly, the M8 by 30 screw that came with the clamp, I found it to be too short. And even squeezing the two clamp legs together with a pair of vice grips, I couldn't get the bolt in. So I ended up using uh, an M8 by 40 uh, from my own collection. So I would suggest that if you're gonna do this, that you have a few bolts to hand. I've not done it up fully tight just yet. I'm gonna move to the front now. Back at the front, temporarily drop the center section back down to the floor by uh, disconnecting the hanging point and fit the gasket to the end of the catalytic converter pipe. You might have to knock it on. Bring your pipe up to the union and put the two screws back in with the springs. A little lube will help them to turn on and tighten them into place with your 14 millimeter socket. I suggest doing about three to five turns per screw and then moving to the other one so that it goes on evenly. If I'd thought about it, I would have got new screws for this. They have got a shoulder, so they will go down tight. Replace the center pipe hanger. Return to just forward of the axle and fully tighten the clamp. You'll need a 13 millimeter socket if you manage to fit the screw that comes with the uh, clamp. From this position, give the whole exhaust a slight wobble just to make sure that it's not clanging against anything. If you are fitting a new O2 sensor, and it is a universal one that comes with no connector on the end, it should come with the necessary hardware for joining the leads to the existing car's connector and wiring instructions for which colour goes to which. Now do not solder the wire joint, use crimps. There is a special tool for crimping these together, but if you haven't got one, use the cutter blade in a pair of pliers, but don't go mad because you don't want to cut through the joint. <laughs> Just enough to make it. And if you do reuse the original one, put a little exhaust assembly paste just around the washer, not too far up the threads, just so that when you tighten it down, it makes a gas tight seal. Because these are crush washers, and of course it's already being crushed ones. And don't forget to keep the heat protection sleeve on the wires as well. That, that would be very easy to forget. And when you're cutting the wires shorter, cut the wires on the new sensor shorter rather than the wires from the connector, because that way you can always connect that connector back to an original O2 sensor if, if the opportunity or the need should arise. Fit your O2 sensor, not forgetting to plug it in. Remove the spanner before you plug it in. Now start the car and then starting at the front, check that all the joints you've made are gas tight. I say all the joints, there are of course only three. The front joint to the catalyst, the fitment of the O2 sensor and the joint for the rear box just forward of the axle. Let the engine run for a little while so that the exhaust can warm through to make sure that the uh, assembly paste is set or take the car on a run. Job jobbed!